Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to the build room. And behind me, we've got another RA23 Celica. Uh, it's not in great shape. So today we're gonna to be stripping it down and seeing whether it's trash or treasure. So stick around and check it out. All right, so yeah, here it is. First of all, Thanks to everyone that sent me the links for this. This was a WA based car that came up and um, a lot of you guys straight away got onto Facebook or onto email and sent me the links to show me what was around, knowing that I needed parts. So that was awesome of you guys. So I picked it up just in the new year. Um, it's been sitting for a couple of weeks waiting for me to get to it as are most things around here. And the question we're really looking to answer today is, is this thing gonna be worthwhile to salvage. For those of you that are regular watchers, you will know that Violet Crumbles has some chassis issues and um, a fair amount of rust in it. This has also got a fair amount of rust, but repairing the chassis damage on Violet Crumbles will be um, quite difficult. It's been repaired once and it's fine, it's roadworthy, but it's just not that cherry chassis that would be nice to have on a car that I'm gonna put that much money into. So we'll look at this thing from two perspectives. Is it a good enough chassis to replace Violet Crumbles? We'll do a little bit of a ship of Theseus there where half of the stuff of Violet Crumbles will end up on this chassis if it is good. Um, the main concerns that I have with this one is not so much the rust in the rockers and that because I would replace all of those, but the roof. <clears throat> the roof seems to have a little bit of a hump here. It feels to me like there is definitely some filler in the roof, uh, especially pronounced here, right on the edge of this rust line here, there is a hump. Now, that could be filler. It could be accident damage or something like that. There's definitely some bog here, not unsurprising for a RA23, but it is unfortunate because the second part of this is, if this chassis is only good for parts and I am really in need of a couple of doors, the RA28 is uh, still waiting for doors. It's currently sitting in etch primer. So yeah, having a couple of doors from this would be sweet. Uh, and also for those of you that have seen the video where I showed you my TA22 that's been sort of garaged for I think about the last 35 years. That one was a show car that had a target top cut into it and I don't like the target top so I need a roof. So <laughs> I'd like this roof to be at least salvageable enough to cut off and put on my TA22. If this chassis is not gonna be any good, if it is good, what we'll probably do is keep the chassis, swap it out and then we will use the roof from Violet Crumbles to save the TA22. So. No matter what happens here, we're gonna say goodbye to one chassis out of the two, but hopefully give two cars a good chance at life. So yeah, let's just have a quick look around and then we'll start getting this place set up. Now, the rear end looks fairly straight. If it has got repairs in it, they're probably fairly well aligned. You can never tell whether they're good or not until we get the paint off, but that's life. I'm expecting there will be a bunch of filler in the guards. You can see it's cracking all through there. Now that could be something as simple as a isolator. You see the pink in there, let's see if we can get that. It's a little bit of pink showing through there. That could be isolator or a spray putty where that's meant the paint just hasn't adhered there well. It does look like a shoddy silver spray can job. So maybe after this was painted, someone went back and um, did the arches because of some rust. The doors look okay from the outside, which is the main thing here. Uh, fenders aren't too bad. It's obviously had a little bit of a front ender. We've got some bent bumperage and definitely some cracking of body filler and stuff around there and a nice big fold in the bonnet. So. The bonnet's quite rusty, it's probably not gonna be salvageable, but there are plenty of parts on this. So, you know, these corner markers, the chrome on them is absolutely excellent. These are a really good find as far as I'm concerned. Um, lenses aren't bad, although I do have new OEM lenses, so I can throw them in there. The indicators are pretty good, the chrome's nice, the plastic is better than some, not perfect, but with a quick sand and a coat of clear, that would be fine. On the front, you can see the valance has taken a hit as well which is unfortunate. Uh, we do have the indicators in the bumper, which is good. And then if we look under the hood, it's not gonna hold up. Those uh, hinges, like every other hinge on an RA23 or 28, are garbage. 18RC motor with air conditioning. So again, this would be the um, third set of RA aircon that I will be able to salvage. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, it looks like the um, inside unit is there as well. But yeah, this is all pretty stock. It's got no carby. We might see if it'll crank over and maybe throw some start your bastard in it and see if it'll run. And then yeah, on this side, it's more of the same. We've got an outstanding corner marker. That's just fantastic. 
indicator is not great on this side. It's got some cracks in it, so that's probably a bin job. No reason to think it's anything other than standard suspension and brakes and all that sort of thing. On the inside, it's pretty gross, um, but it's a black interior. Uh, there is a lot of the parts there. That dash is shot to all hell, but um, yeah, there'll be plenty in here that's salvageable. It's got the tray underneath. Uh, as I said, it's got the aircon unit. Um, the door trims aren't bad. They've probably come up with a bit of a cleanup. Uh, it's got seats that clearly need a full retrim. Same with the rear, but uh, the rear door trims don't look too bad either. So yeah, it's not a cherry car that you know I've managed to pick up for a steal and gonna get a whole bunch of parts off, but it was well priced. Um, the people were good to deal with. And uh, as I said, even if I can't salvage the chassis, there's more than enough parts here to make it worth my time. So yeah. We are working outside today. Uh, it is gonna be about 32 degrees, I think. So it's not a bad day for Perth weather. But the first thing that we're gonna to need to do here is get some sun cover and uh, get some tools out here so we uh, don't have to run back and forward to the garage all day. So yeah, let's just go transition. All right, so we set up, we got a gazebo, we got some jack stands, uh, we got some tables and uh, we've got ourselves a Dave. Say hi, Dave. My blood type is uh, A positive, and yes, I'm a private health insurance. Just make sure you tell the ambulance that when it gets here. And so with Dave helping, uh, I think we're gonna start on the large hanging panels. We'll try and make the most impact as quickly as possible. We're not gonna run through this in detail of how to disassemble. You guys should know that by now from watching the channel, but uh, it should be fun to watch. So let's get into it. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> We just lay it all out on the driveway. Rush away the 50 million redbacks. What are you doing? They're Phillips head. Why are you doing them with a. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing left in there, Dave. Uh, do you want to grab a drill? You might want to uh, stand back and hold your breath. was a good system. No, the Imperial system. I need a 1532 socket. Hell. Cool. Get this in the drain area. <laughs>
Why don't you pull the uh, door trim off the uh, inside doors so that we can get the doors off easier? A few moments later. All right, Dave, explain what's happened. The snozberries taste like snozberries. Oh, you're actually bleeding, bleeding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, I'm getting it everywhere. Oh, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding in multiple places. Safety glass, my left foot. It's only safety glass, it can't cut you. <laughs> yeah, thank God for that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't have the camera pointed at Dave when that happened. I was working in the bay and filming what I was doing, uh, so we didn't get it. But then I remembered, I have security cameras. So uh, yeah, here's some audio uh, free footage. So maybe I'll uh, have to make something up for it. But yeah, here's the shot of it actually happening. All right, and with that done, uh, we can get back to our regularly scheduled programming. Ooh. Which way are you going up? Yeah. Mm. Oh, there we go. Yeah. That's how you do it, laddie. Probably need it on this one as well. Probably just put that on the end of the impact if you want. There we go. Son of a bitch, in the face. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Sheared come, it. I was going to say, to come out or shear off? Yeah, shear off in the end. I'm just going to bend metal. Yeah, well, just hang on. There's a reason why you break things, Dave. I thought you knew this. Just an immediate lever point and just lever as hard as possible. I feel like that's what I was doing, Cam. No, I'm not levering up. Yeah, I was just getting a purchase. <laughs> <laughs> this is going cars so much more fun when I'm around. Costly, but more fun. Fuck, maybe they have some of these on. It definitely feels like it. Right. Why would you sit close to mom though? People are stupid. I think it's going to come off, but we'll just try and pull gingerly. Oh. Oh, bought one. I don't understand why I keep blowing indicator pieces. Yeah. That'll be two lights here.
All right, so sit rep. Uh, Dave's had to shoot off. Uh, it's the end of the day for him. Um, we've got bonnet, all the front end, guards, doors, and everything off. Um, we haven't kept too much from the bay, to be honest, at the moment. There's still a few little brackets and things like that that I may need at some point, so I'll come back for those. Not sure what I'm gonna do with the motor at this point. I've got a couple of 18RC, so I don't really need this one, but I do know there's someone that's looking for a sump, so maybe they can hang on to that. Behind the fenders is pretty good shape. Some clown, uh, when they repaired that, they sickerflex that on, so that was horrible. Just a heap of work with a uh, spatula and a hammer and got it off without ruining the guard. Fender liners look pretty good. I'll pull them off in a minute. With the doors off, it's a little bit easier to see the interior. There's not a huge amount there, as I said, uh, and both of the seats are pretty much RS, but new foam and new covers, and they'd be fine. All the mechanisms are there on the runners, which are the important things. And this is the rear. Boot lid is yeah, pretty average. There's not that much rust in here. Uh, certainly not anywhere near as bad as Violet Crumbles was. I know we've done some work to fix VC, but certainly a better starting point than Crumbles was. A uh, couple of breakages, lost a tail light, uh, obviously lost that window, um, but nothing too important at the moment, to be honest. Uh, and this is uh, what we've got, the Airfix Toyota Celica. Um, so yeah, there's a fair bit here. Both of the guards are pretty good. The doors look promising, at least the skins. Obviously we won't know for sure until we get the uh, paint off those, but fingers crossed on those. The bonnet, eh, it's like a five out of 10. Um, the bumper's not straight and it's had lights drilled into it at some point by the looks of things. But, you know, door trims are pretty good. The aircon unit came out. We only had to cut this one pipe that leads to the interior unit. Those things get super tight and corroded together. And if you try to get them off, you run the risk of basically breaking the piece off, the pipe off the um, internal unit. So I'd rather cut that copper pipe there and replace it than ruin the interior unit. So that's what we've done. But yeah, nothing too bad. It is getting late in the day though. So I think I'm probably gonna pack it in for now. Uh, there's gonna be a lot to pack up here. And um, probably need another day just to pull all the interior parts and the chrome trims and the screens and stuff like that. And then we'll probably give this a big clean down with the pressure washer and see if we can sort of make a decision on whether this is gonna stay or whether that roof is coming off. So yeah, we're gonna hold it here for now and I will see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day, we're all set up and uh, yeah. Plan here is gonna start with the seats and then gonna pull the headlining out. Um, the headlining is dropping down, so while I'm working in there, I don't wanna be covered in junk from this. I also want all the rods and the plastic clips off them out of here because those are hard to get. And then from there, probably gonna pull the carpets. Now these aren't original carpets, this is just outdoor carpet that's been laid in here. So uh, I'm not sure what that means for the state of the floors under it. And once the majority of this stuff is out, I'll clean out all the interior just so it's a nice, nicer place to work. And then we can start on things like getting the uh, rear door trims off and getting the windows out and stuff like that. So yeah, um, no point jibber jabbering about it. Let's just dig into it.
All right, so here we are. Uh, a lot of dirt came off this thing, so let's take a look. Um, the good news is in the engine bay, it all looks pretty good. Cleaning out all the muck of this uh, really gave me an opportunity to see like the rust down here on the rails and up under the brake booster, which is fairly common when brake boosters leak fluid. But all of that is just surface rust, so we're fine there. Um, if you remember on Violet Crumbles, there was rust all through the back of the strut towers on both sides. Both of these are good, so that's not too bad. In terms of damage, really the only damage is the stuff that we knew about, which is this section here, and that can be replaced. It is quite clean, and there's, while there's like lots of surface rust around the place, it doesn't feel like it's rusting through that. It feels more like that's rusting from the outside in. If we have a look in the plenum, it's not that much light, but in there is actually quite neat. There's not a lot of muck in there um, and it all looks pretty good. So, you know, that is not too bad. Around the top of the scuttle panel, there's a little bit of rust in the middle there and there's rust over that side, but nothing too bad. The windscreen's still really dirty because I didn't want to spray inside up here because I would have wet all of the uh, dash. As for the rest of the interior, we'll come back to that in a second. We'll just have a look in the boot. So the rear obviously very straight there's a little bit of rust coming through i'm not sure whether that's from the back or the front but either way yes there is rust in this back panel um, this area actually came up better than i expected it's it's fairly solid all the way along here it's starting to rust at the top but it doesn't feel like it's eaten through and obviously there's this section here but there's not a huge thick layer of filler there that's like a millimeter i have a feeling someone's just it's had some rust starting there and they, when they painted the car, they probably just, um, they've just scuffed that, run a layer of bog over it and then painted and it's just continued to rust underneath that. But yeah, certainly a fair amount of structure there in the boot. Now this was looked diabolical when I first got to it, but now with all the muck cleaned out of here, it's actually not too bad. Obviously, yes, there's a bunch of rust in the wheel well, but that is actually less rust than in Violet Crumble's wheel well. And most importantly, all of this structure is nice and sound. In Violet Crumbles, it was hit so hard that this area here has crumpled up and there's even wavy patterns in the floor of the tire well too. So this is way, way better than that. Um, inside, you can't really see much under here, but inside the wheel arches, fairly decent too. Um, there was a lot of rust in the back section here on Violet Crumbles. Obviously this piece is shot out same with this piece here but yeah they were both gone on violet crumbles too and needed rebuilding so you know i've already done that job once uh, and the good thing is i mean the main rust on this side is actually on the sill here and you can see it's just been crushed so this area here should be sitting out about here so it's just been crushed up but this trim up the top isn't bent and the pinch weld on the underside of the car is straight too, which means it's only that sill that has been bent. And nowadays, uh, KF Vintage will make three panels. They make a full panel that goes from here to here. It includes that front area there, which rusts out. They make the inner skin as well. And they also make an outer piece here. So you can replace this entire lot with sheet metal. And I avoided taking this off on Violet Crumbles and I made some stuff to paint in there and that without pulling it off. but. Um, actually with a replacement piece and the ability just to pop it on and spot weld it on, actually a pretty easy repair. So I'm not too scared of that either. Both of the wheel arches are good. This one doesn't have its uh, inner guard liner. The other one's still on, but this uh, side here looks good. And on the other side, it's exactly the same. And yeah, if we have a look at the interior now, uh, we'll come back to the floors, but just to start at the back, first of all, you can see all of the sound deadener and a lot of the glue came off just with the pressure washers. That was good. But what I wanted to show you guys was if we look in here, I'll try and get some good shots of that. You can see in here where there's multiple layers, they're all still rust free and pretty much perfect condition. Violet Crumbles was rusted all the way through and even rusted through this inner section here. Um, but that is all good all through there. It's all good around the top here as well, all through there. And then same again on this side. Now that is one of the common places for RAs to rust out. So really impressed that that hasn't rusted out yet. All of this area is pretty good. The parcel shelf here is probably 90%. It's really quite good. There's a couple of sections right at the back there that have got holes in them. But 
again, in comparison to Crumbles, this is light years ahead. So to be honest, um, this is becoming a more and more viable option. There is rust, so we can see here and then down through the floor here and then in this corner here. That's probably the worst of the rust, but not as bad as Crumbles. That side is much better. It's a little bit of surface rust. Um, in terms of all the floor plugs, and I welded those up because I was so bad on bullet crumbles, I just had to cut them right out. Um, they're good. There is a little bit of rust here. Usually this is accompanied by a windscreen leak, but the area that the uh, pedal sits on rusts out. Hasn't rusted through though. There's a little bit on the firewall there as well. Hasn't rusted through on that either. And then on this side, probably due to a leaking heater core, there's a little bit of surface rust there, but again, nothing that's gone through. So at the moment, this really is looking like a replacement for VC. Um, it might be Violet Crumbles Mark II, replacement Violet Crumbles, or uh, what we call it, V2. <laughs> yeah, we'll go V2, uh, hashtag V2. This area is really the one that I was mainly worried about. So there is, I can feel a hump there. I'm not sure why. It could be that when they did this paint job, they put some high fill on it. And then when they were sanding, they kind of stopped sanding there so they didn't have to take the screen out. They didn't want to damage any of this trim. And this trim is all really good. So maybe uh, this is just bad sanding. So it's getting a bit late now. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is I'm going to strip all the paint off this. I'm also going to strip some paint on the rear quarters here just to make sure they're not full of bog. But yeah, for now, uh, let's go and have a look at what we pulled out. I didn't pull out the dash, obviously. That's all still in there. Um, I just didn't want to get to that today and I wanted to work clean in here and it just took uh, a long time to dry. It's still drying now, but it will dry up properly. But yeah, we're going to lose the light any minute now. So let's have a look at what we did get out of this. Okay, we'll start with the two seats. We knew those were coming out. We knew they were pretty much garbage. The runners on them aren't as nice as I would like. I don't think they're corroded or anything, but they do need to be probably cleaned out and then WD-40. We've got the runners that sit along the sills. Uh, we took out the sun visors and the rear vision mirror. Sun visors are pretty good. Rear vision mirror is just starting to tear out on the back. It's not horrible, but it's not worth putting into a restored car. We've got all the rods. Unfortunately, there's only uh, basically one end that I salvaged from that. The rest of them were just too brittle. They were sort of crumbling in my fingers, which sucked, but um, I can always 3D print some stuff for that. Rear seats, um, the bottom is pretty good, actually. It's a bit stained and whatever, but it doesn't really matter because the top is, uh, to put it nicely, shagged. It definitely uh, blew out all the vinyl on the top and the actual foam has burnt up and is deteriorating as well. Not a big deal though, because uh, nowadays James Margie's making uh, really good copies for these and anyone can get them and they're reasonably priced. This is probably the coolest thing that's come out of the back and that is the two door cards. Both of them are pretty spectacular, to be honest. I think they will just need a cleanup and they will be pretty much perfect. Uh, even the black um, plastic tabs that hold them in were there. And then this. So this was the sound deadening uh, thing that goes between the uh, fuel tank and the seat. I've never seen one of these. Um, I've seen this before. My original TA23 had one of these, uh, but that's all it had. Never before have I seen this. This must be the OEM uh, noise stop. So yeah, that was cool for me to see. Maybe you guys have seen it a lot, but um, yeah, now I've got one of those. So uh, it's in pretty good nick too. No staining or anything. It just needs, this is just dust on the top. So it just needs to be cleaned off. And that's about it. So yeah, if we add this haul to the haul from yesterday, we are doing pretty good. And uh, like I said, this is looking like it may be a usable shell. So like I said, we're gonna leave it for today. I'm gonna pack up now, but we'll come back again tomorrow morning, three day weekend, you gotta love it. Uh, and we're just gonna do a quick look at the underside. I haven't shown you guys that yet. And we're gonna uh, go through the paint in a couple areas and see if there's any evidence of massive amounts of body filler or bog. So yeah, once again, um, we're just gonna transition here. All right, so it's the following morning. Everything's nicely dried out now, which is good. We're not gonna keep rusting here. The first thing that I wanna start with is the paintwork. We'll get under the car at the end. I'm just gonna grind a small section here. So this is pretty much down to bare metal right here. And this area is where the hump is. So if I figure if I take out a section about here, we'll be able to see what the metal's like. I might also just take it down through here just to see what the repair here was like, because that'll be a good gauge for uh, whoever did this, you know, they did the rest of it most likely. So yeah, let's get that paint off. We might take some paint off. I'm not gonna go crazy here. We're not stripping this down. I'm just gonna do a couple of spot checks because um, otherwise if we strip it down, obviously it's gonna start rusting immediately. We don't want that. So yeah, let's get the uh, 
strip it disc onto that and then we'll see what we're dealing with. All right, so we'll start with the obvious. Um, this area, look, there's not a huge amount of bog in there. I think maybe there's just a, there was a little bit of a dent here. I, I extended the area that I ground off just to try and get a feel for it. And there's no hump there, and then the, the hump starts coming in there. I actually think it might have just had a little bit of a dent here. Um, doesn't seem to have been a repair. This might just be inaccuracy of the factory uh, panels. I'll probably check on Violet Crumbles at some point because Violet Crumbles' roof is pretty good. But no major damage there, nothing that you couldn't just get out. So yeah, that's fine, not worried about that. Uh, in terms of the rest of the car, everywhere I spot checked, getting good results, straight back to bare metal very quickly. Basically just one coat of paint ever on top of the factory. So there was a, looks to be a coat of that yellow color there as a primer filler over the top of the factory color and then silver on top as the top coat. Well, and a clear. So yeah, everything was going down pretty quickly until we got to this section. There was a little bit of cracking here and I figured that might've had a bump and it looks like it has. Not a big one. So it looks like it's just sort of dented here and a little bit on the corner there. And so what they've done is they've panel beaded it out and it's not a bad job of panel beating. It's fairly smooth. And then just put a coat of filler over the top. There was a little bit of rust here. So maybe they didn't treat it properly or um, clean it up enough before they put a skimmer bog over the metal and that's just pushed the filler up and cracked it. Um, I did check this side just to be sure that it hadn't got a Violet Crumbles-esque hit and this is all perfect, this is all factory. So there's nothing wrong there. The only stuff on top of this was the filler and then the silver. So yeah, all good there. Did spot checks all through here and as you saw, really just a second with the grinder and it was back to bare metal. So really healthy there. On the arches, um, good up the top, this seems like a bit of filler. I didn't bother grinding it into too much because the bottom line is, the reason I'm looking at making sure I've got a really good platform for this is I've kind of changed the plans for Violet Crumbles or had changed the plans for Violet Crumbles before this shell came along. And it meant I was gonna be investing a lot more money into it. And that's what got me a little bit, mm, I'm not really sure and indecisive around the quality of the chassis underneath. And so not super worried about the arches because the next incarnation of this would likely have fender flares. There's still two more things I wanna do on this for you guys today. The first one is to get underneath and take a look. Um, and then uh, we need to be able to move this around and these wheels aren't gonna work. So we're gonna get some wheels on this. Uh, and the RA28 has got the Enkies on it. So uh, we've got something different for this. But yeah, let's get under the car first and see what that looks like. All right, first of all, we have the mother of all diff leaks there. That was all cleaned yesterday and uh, that's just what's dripped out overnight. So I might drain the fluid out of that to stop that continuing to drip. But let's have a look at the underside. This is gonna be hard because we're not that high in the air, but you can see there is a generous helping of just light surface rust slash dirt across the whole thing. You can see back here, the rails are perfect. And the issue with Violet Crumbles is that section there, it is behind the points where the suspension mounts. So the car still drives straight, but they've been hit so hard that they kinked and someone's tried to stretch them out. So basically you put on a chassis jig and you pull it hard and then you give it a whack and things tend to stretch back out into the space they're supposed to be, but, but it's never a perfect concourse repair. Now the areas around both of the trailing arm pickup points uh, are all solid and good. Uh, the rails themselves moving forward, great on both sides. I mean, generally you can see across this whole area, there's not a lot of rust or there's really no rust other than um, just the undercoat being brown and rusty. I mean, this sort of surface stuff here is absolutely nothing to worry about. The only thing that is frustrating is the damage that's on these front rails. Now, that's fairly common. A lot of people put jack stands under these rails going, oh, they're the chassis rails. They'll be the strongest point in the car. They're not. They're just, um, this is just boxed sheet metal, basically. You can see the thickness here, right? That is not a lot to hold up the entire weight of the car. Yeah, lots of people cave these in. This is not uncommon. 
but this is also fixable. I could get the spot welding damp peller on this and just pull it out a little bit. As long as you don't start cutting into it too much and making it Swiss cheese, uh, the strength is still gonna be pretty good. Realistically, um, corrosion wise, not a lot there. Damage wise, pretty good. About what I would expect for a car of this age. The front rails all through here are all pretty good on both sides, so there's really nothing to worry about there. So yeah, um, look, I think it's time to get this thing on its wheels. Uh, oh, I'm just noticing, you can see here, I forgot about this. Uh, when we swapped these tires over, I noticed someone has pulled that caliper off. I would imagine it was probably seized on the disc, stopping this thing from rolling around. So they just took it off. Last car I did this on, I did it with a hammer. I uh, just belted off the um, uh, disc itself and then it's free to roll. That one is still on. That would be problematic in rolling this thing around. I might just cut both the calipers off, which means I'll have to drain the fluid, but um, small price to pay for not getting this thing locked up at some point. So yeah, I'm gonna go top side and we'll get this thing on some wheels. All right, so there we go. Time for some wheels. Oops, one more. All right, and that is looking way better. Now, I also drained the diff like I said I was going to, so no more oil leaks. And even though we got no front brakes, uh, I left the handbrake in so we can still pull this thing up if we need to. All right, so there we have it. Um, done and dusted on this one for today. So we got heaps of parts off the car that were pretty good. Um, some of them really, really good. And if that's all that we managed to get off this thing, that would be good enough for me. Now this has still got the dash and all the instruments and the glove box and all that sort of thing. It's still got the front and rear windscreens. Um, actually it's got wipers and the front scuttle panel vent. Didn't bother pulling them out at the moment. Uh, and it's also got the fuel tank in it. So, you know, you add all of that up and then also include the roof skin for the TA22. And I've got a lot of value out of this car one way or another. In addition to that, um, the guy that sold me the car actually came back and he picked up the entire motor. Uh, I didn't need it, he had a use for it. I think he just wanted the sump. So that's good for him. And from my perspective, it's good to see uh, this stuff not wasted and getting some reuse. But the question now is, is this actually a worthwhile replacement for the shell of Violet Crumbles? So that's gonna be the question. I don't have an answer for that one way or another just yet. Um, I'm really keen to see what you guys think. So, you know, put your comments below. Uh, there is a huge nostalgia factor for Violet Crumbles for me, being it's the car that started the channel. And I know that a lot of you guys have been patiently waiting for more Violet Crumbles content, but I think this is, if we put nostalgia aside, the quicker way forward on that. So something for you guys to consider and something for me to consider also. But that is where we're gonna leave it today. So the usual stuff, I'll put the full Violet Crumble series, ironically, up here, and YouTube will put some other content down there. Other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.